Hi everyone, uh, this is Nikki Rowland and today I have a layout for Simple Stories. I am delighted to be working with the Simple Vintage Lemon Twist collection. As soon as I saw it, I was just in love with it. Um, so I was desperate to use this one. Um, so uh, yeah, and today I have not one layout for you, but two, uh, because I loved it so much. <laughs> so they're on separate videos though, because uh, I figured that two layouts on one video would, would make things a bit too long. So I've separated them out. Um, so I'm using this paper. This is a beautiful paper. Look at how gorgeous that is. I love the vintage feel to these um to these types of papers even though generally I wouldn't go for vintage I always, when I say vintage I think of heritage so I think of all the browns and sepia tones and, and that doesn't really appeal to me but these papers with the modern twist to them are absolutely stunning I just love them so uh, anyway I decided to use this paper here which is a very busy paper and I always worry about how to use these papers because I want to do them justice um, and I don't want to cover up anything that's on such a beautiful paper. So what I decided to do was to use a large format photo. So this is a 12 by 12 photo of my eight year old boy. Um, he's sunning himself in the garden and I just managed to snap this beautiful photo of him. Um, and uh, I figured that if I trim it down a bit and trim around all the elements on the paper, I might be able to slot him in to the paper. So, um, as I was, I'm not very good with the craft knife, full disclosure, this is really not my thing. Um, so I was a bit worried about whether I would actually manage to achieve what I was aiming for in my head, but I totally did. It really did work very well. So I had to trim my photo down because I wanted, um, I wanted the paper to have a border around the edge. Um, and then I, uh, so I trimmed it down to about 11 and a half inches ish um, and um, then I um, cut around the left side and then the right side so I started off with my craft knife now I am not good with the craft knife as I just mentioned however this did work okay so I, I found I bought a, a really um, high-end craft knife um, and it never worked I was never able to cleanly cut the paper even on a glass mat which is something that uh, I understand is uh, key when you're um, using a craft knife. Um, so um, I was like, I'm just useless at it. I just can't do it. However, then I bought, somebody recommended me to get some surgical um, scalpels. So that's what I did. I bought a pack of 10 of them on Amazon for like four quid or some four pounds. Sorry. <laughs> and um, and they're really, really good. Um, so, uh, and then because they're so cheap, once they go a little bit blunt, I can just throw them away. So, um, so yeah, it was, that's definitely one, my key thing. Um, so, uh, so right, here we go. I have now cut out all around the elements on the right and the left. Um, I did have to abandon my craft knife at some point and cut some detail bits out with scissors. I am much, much more accurate with scissors than I am a craft knife. Um, so I did manage to do that, um, to go around some of the detail. Um, but uh, but basically, yeah, I've ended up with um, this big section on the right and the big section on, a bigger section on the left. Um, so I wasn't too sure about the big yellow area on the top left because it wasn't, um, because it was like an area of kind of like a paint brush stroke effectively it didn't quite look right as it as it was it just looked at it because it looked fine on the paper as it was but once I cut it out it lost that uh, feeling of being naturally brushed onto the paper. So um, just to combat that, I have covered some of it up and I have curled the edges as well. Um, so um, I can, I, I've say I'm going to put some embellishments over that section. But now you can see that I have my large photo. Um, I have my really beautiful, pretty elements from that paper um, sitting over the top of it. And I've kind of tucked my photo inside. Um, on the back, I just um, made sure that it was in the right place. And I've taped it all in place. There was a big section that was over the back of my photo, does that make sense? A big section of the paper that was over the back of my photo. I just cut that off because I didn't need that there and also that means I can probably use a bit of that paper for something else later on. Um, and uh, just secured it all um, with tape. It is, um, it's, it has ended up being quite a floppy layout, not having much um, there because it's just the photo and then a very small amount of paper around the edge really. So what I did do in the end was put a piece of uh, white uh, cardstock um, onto the back of the layout just to secure it and then stuck it all, all to there. Um, and that has made it much more stable. It feels like a, um, I, can, I could prop it up on my uh, wall display now and it won't curl or 
you know, slip down. So, um, yeah, that was definitely a good, a good move. Um, okay, so here I am now coming in with my embellishments. Of course, when you have a large photo like this, um, you don't need a huge amount on the page because um, otherwise you'll cover up too much of your subject. So um, I just had to be careful. Um, the one section that does bother me a bit is the bird over on the right-hand side who's, um, you know, he's encroaching onto my child's uh, head. Um, but I think it's okay. I think it works. You know, it doesn't cover up any of his major facial features like an eye or... Um, you know, he doesn't like kind of distort his face. It is just in his hair. So I, I figured it was okay. Um, I could have cut that bird off, but I quite liked him. He was, he's quite cute. He looks like he's about to either take flight or start singing. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Um, okay. So I've just put a, um, put a title in place. I wanted to make sure that I put my title in place before I did too much else because I was worried that I would then not have any room for it. So I've just used, um, the word life is from the foam stickers um, and the word sweet is a chipboard piece uh, from the chipboard stickers. So I'm just adding those um, onto my, directly onto the photo. Um, the, um, the chipboard needs a bit of extra sticky, I think. Um, it's coming off a bit. So I could either, I could actually sew through that or I could um, just secure it with some glossy accents or something. Um, uh, over on the right hand side, there's a bit of a gap in the elements. So I'm going to fill that gap up with some tags. So I've got a black tag, which is from the uh, ephemera or the, the journal bits and um, a chipboard tag, which I believe is from the decorative brads. Um, and uh, so I've just put those two, um, tuck those two in there. On the black one, I've added um, black and white gingham ribbon and I've tied that through with um turquoise uh, or aqua baker's twine and the chipboard tag I've just tied through with um, with the baker's twine as well and just layered those over the top of each other and, po and poked them in. I've also stapled them in place as well so um, they one won't move and two just kind of I'm going to use the staples uh, for the tickets further down on that side so I, I figured it was nice to bring those staples in elsewhere as well. Uh, down at the bottom left, I'm just adding some bits and pieces. So I've got a chipboard sticker that says time is best spent with you. I love these types of kind of bo almost border stickers that um, have the doilies and a little cluster and some like almost strips of kind of washi tape type. I really love those. They're absolutely one of my favorite things. Um, so I wanted to get that in there. So I've, I've put that down on the bottom left uh, side. Um, at the top there, on the top left, I'm just adding, that's that area I was a bit worried about earlier with the paint strokes. Um, so I'm just putting in a large uh, chipboard piece that's uh, Singer's um, lemon soda and lemons and butterflies and flowers. So that's all just uh, sitting in there. I love that cluster. It's a gorgeous cluster. Um, and that's just tucked behind some leaves. Then at the top part, I've, I'm adding some banners um, to help with that. Uh, yellow area that I was a bit worried about it just it just didn't I liked the yellow it just didn't look like the natural brush stroke it was supposed to be once I'd fussy cut it out so it kind of lost its meaning um so um just by covering it up and curling it a bit that actually sorted that out completely and it meant that I kept that yellow section which I really liked um so I've got you are the sweetest and then the black one says be sweet be kind um the sweetest one is from the chipboard and the be sweet be kind is from the ephemera or the bits and pieces I've added some hearts up there as well which I have raised on foam pads um and I'm adding um some decorative brads and some other bits and pieces uh, to the layout as well so I'm um, just coming in there and just poking little bits and pieces in wherever there's a gap or wherever I can fit them in without it looking too cluttered. Oh, here's my little baby trying to get my attention. Um, he regularly features in my uh, my videos. Um, randomly the other day, he put his foot in one of the videos. That was interesting. Um, right, so I'm pretty much done now. I have also sewn around the edge of the photo as well, just to give it a bit more of a border and also to make it more secure. And that is this layout complete. Um, I loved making this out. I, this collection is an absolute delight to design with. I just love it. Um, so you can see a few of the detail uh, close-up shots here. A uh, little bit bright, I'm afraid. I have a very had a very sunny day the day I took these photos and I really struggled with the lighting. Um, so uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you enjoy the next video as well. Uh, thank you so much. That was Nikki Rowland for Simple Stories.